Hello and welcome. Uh, the, the big question for the day, actually for many days, has been do celebrities and film stars and cricketers, all of them belonging to of, of course the same bunch, make good political candidates, particularly at a time when we've got parliamentary elections coming up. So uh, it's a very interesting subject. Uh, it's not something that's new. Uh, many political parties have uh, hoisted and foisted uh, celebrities on us for many years now, but uh, this time uh, uh, at the 2014 Lok Sabha elections, it seems to have taken a new high of sorts. So I'm joined by two people who are going to help us decode and also pro provide a little bit of history to some of the examples that we've seen in the past and how they've performed. Ayaz Memon, uh, senior journalist, also sports commentator, and uh, Shankar Ayer, uh, author, The Accidental Indian. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. So, uh, let me begin with you, Ayaz. I'm going to ask both of you for your best examples of uh, celebrities who've become politicians, and subsequently, I'm, I'm sure, fizzled out. <laughs> <laughs> so, or those who never made the cut. Those who never you made know, the I mean, cut. The most striking examples are the celebs from the south or the film actors from the okay. south who went on not just to become politicians but mm. to head parties. Correct. Uh, you know, Jaya Lalita is a yeah. classic example before, yeah. him, before her NTR and yeah. so many others. So, those are the successful ones. And Tiger Pataudi, Mansur yeah. Ali Khan Pataudi, one of the you know best known cricketers yeah. India has produced yeah. but twice mm. Contested for the election in both, I think once he lost his deposit. Okay. So these are two extreme examples. There are many in between. Right. So why do these uh, uh, celebrities do it? Did they always have an innate desire to do it, or it's only because they were approached with a ticket they suddenly decided that oh yeah, why not? I think one has to make a uh, distinction between the south of India, where you know the uh, the celebs are pretty much enmeshed in the political right. process, <clears throat> so to speak, <clears throat> and in the north, which is a little different. There are now, of course growing examples of how even in the north mm. or north of India, mm. uh, there are celebs who have got, kind of got into the pol uh, election right. or the political process, like Smith, Smriti Irani for right. instance, right. Shatrugan Sinha for many years, right. you know, he's yeah. been a polit uh, political awareness in Bihar anyway is very high, yeah. so he, he seemed a natural <laughs> fit, <laughs> right. but okay. uh, you ah. know, there are others who are not. Right. Shankar, let's get your uh, best examples of uh, celebrities uh, who've uh, been sort of uh, uh, in the in the political stage or on the political stage? Well, NGR for sure. Hmm. Uh, definitely big player, big uh, uh, ideas man and uh, he used his celebrity dumb to great effect and then Jailalita who trained under him. Uh, you could also uh, look at Shatrugan Sunna, uh, Jaya Bachchan to a great extent and nobody really expected that. But uh, she is uh, political and then Jaya Prada. See, the uh, thing how it started in the south, really, you know, uh, the original parties were uh, Congress and other ragtag coalitions. So, if you needed a real opposition, you brought in people with a face, with a brand, with some competitive edge. And in Tamil Nadu, uh, the Dravidian parties really broke. And sort of inspired actors and performers to join the movement uh, against Congress and against the caste system. So that's where it got a kick in. And I think uh, most celebrities uh, do well uh, when the tide is with them. I don't know of celebrities who have sort of done well when the tide was against them. Right. Right. Okay. For, for instance, for instance yeah. if you look at uh, Amitabh Bachchan defeating a titan like Henmati Nandan Bhavuna in Allahabad for over a lakh votes hmm. or uh, Govinda uh, defeating Ram Nayak many times MLA and MP uh, in Mumbai. I think uh, those were with the tide. Uh, I don't know of uh, either cricketers or celebrities who have sort of upset the tide and won. Got it. Okay, uh, I ask, uh, first of all, uh, do cricketers and film stars fall into the same bracket when it comes to our celebrity definition and standing in for politics? And secondly, the point that Shankar made, uh, are they, do they, have they ever won against a tide? Certainly so, Govind, because I think cinema and cricket are the two most uh, mm. obvious and striking metaphors of Indian life, so to speak. So, very high visibility, very, you know, huge mass following mm. makes them absolute sure. you know attraction for political parties to yeah. feel them yeah. uh, and but look at the end of the day to be in politics for the long haul mm. you need a gut for it mm. you need obviously to perform 
as a politician rather than just resting on your hmm. uh, status hmm. so amitabh bachchan kind of fizzled out because hmm. he couldn't take the political system as hmm. as we understand hmm. govinda i think he's been quite candid about it he's been quite about it rajesh yeah. khanna hmm. you know they, these have been the striking examples from the congress party but in the south you'll hmm. find that because even in cinema hmm. they were in a sense propagating hmm. political philosophy or ideology even if it's done in a crass mass way hmm. but they were part of that process so hmm. mgr as he mentioned ntr jay lalitha hmm. a lot of the south actors are actually in, in indirectly if not hmm. directly espousing hmm. political causes hmm. as mass entertainment hmm. so there seems to be a slightly more natural fit there hmm. than in the rest of india but now with a lot of uh, you know cable tv penetration visibility being very high hmm. i think more and more political parties are saying you know as even in as an exigency let's get somebody who can win an election for us right so that's the next question uh, shankar is this desperation that you know when uh, i know that we've defined the subject by saying that okay north is different from the south of india southern politicians as i asked pointed out have always been a little more uh, interconnected or and with real issues and people's issues uh, albeit in a somewhat mass manner but is it uh, the larger question of course is that are they is there a certain sense of desperation on the part of political parties and is that desperation at an all time high in these elections well you know uh, quickly two names that we missed out ntr mm. and sunil dat mm. big time success stories in politics in fact sunil dat's daughter still sort of uh, lives off uh, some of uh, sunil dat's goodwill yeah. and uh, in ntr's party continues Uh, on the thing about desperation, I think when the going is very competitive and there's so much to lose, you put out everything that might help you. So uh, cricket and Bollywood, for instance, are alternate religions in India. They sort of unify and divide opinion. So bringing a cricketer or a film star gives you visibility edge that political parties can do it in a tough. competition for instance against rahul gandhi putting up smriti irani <clears throat> they have an advantage i mean she's visible she's known and she's been in parliament she's a agit prop agitationist uh, so all <laughs> of this uh, is there so uh, that makes uh, things work for you uh, navjot siddhu in amritsar uh, worked for the bjp which could never win the amritsar seat because it's a jat sikh seat Right. Now, unfortunately, because the guy has been sort of uh, benched, <laughs> he's so, been hit for a six, Shankar. Uh, <laughs> that that would kind of uh, prove that uh, sometimes there is there are other kinds of desperation also. <laughs> I think my cricketers and celebrities come into the field also is both celebrity, uh, both film stars and cricketers have a sell by date. uh you know they function on uh, how young they are and it's a physical thing uh, so you look for an alternate career uh, and so you have cricketers like kirti azad kiran reddy and then film stars like uh, hema malini and others who sort of join into the mainstream right so uh, the question i'm going to ask both of you is at least intuitively how many politicians uh, who were ex celebrities or rather let me put it this way how many celebrities film stars cricketers who became politicians have actually turned out to do good i ask let me begin with you rough percentage intuitively well i i think uh, including the south i mean in, if you were to yeah well obviously jailalitha is a very yeah. striking yeah. example so no, if i were to ask you let's say for every 10 uh, celebrities who get into politics how many do you think actually end up doing some good i think the strike rate is rather poor okay. to be honest uh, i think i would say about 30 to 40% at best okay uh, and but it's increasing what's mm. also happening is that the celeb involvement is getting kind of hyper localized for mm. instance in mm. the old days you would have find found even in the northern states mm. bollywood stars being fielded but now you mm. got ravi kishan mm. you got manoj Bhojpuri. tiwari mm. bhojpuri actors who have a very strong following mm. in that particular area okay and cricketers being i thought i think used a little cleverly mm. we'll have to wait and see what happens mohammad azharuddin mm. in moradabad very high muslim population mm. mohammad kaif in phulpur again very high concentration of muslim muslims mm. Mm. you know i mean these are very young very mm. familiar faces mm. moradabad is not a seat that azharuddin has got again right. he's gone to sawai madhopur where again there's a large muslim population right. so there's also a little mix and match how see how they fit in mm. but the success rate i am mm. not so sure is very high 
uh, overall. Uh, overall. Right. So, uh, 30 to 30 percent is what you're saying. I, my, 30 my, to 40 opinion, percent. Yes. Uh, Shankar, what's your best uh, guesstimate on this? Well, I, I think every third guy would have done well. I mean, in the average is better because the guys in the south have done and stuck on more longer than the guys in the That's north. That's why 30 percent. Every third. <laughs> but, but one must give the devil its due. Yeah. It's a tough place to be. I mean, an average MP has to deal with something like a million complaints. Uh, he has to service, let's say, between 1500 to 2000 polling booths. Uh, and people don't distinguish between a member of parliament or a member of the municipal council. Yes. You are expect to clean everybody's gutter. And that is a tough challenge for most guys, leave alone celebrities. So, uh, the performance track also gets hit by uh, what kind of team you have. For instance, Vinod Khanna did very well in Punjab. Uh, he had a good team, Dhanmendra had a good team. Uh, there are people who are able to do these things uh, when they have a good team working for them because the celebrity by nature is only there to sort of paper over the edges, convince people and all. But the problems of India's governance are unlikely to be solved just because a celebrity is writing a letter. So, <laughs> you must yeah. put that book in the air for some more time. Right. So, which actually, I mean, if I were to look at it the other way around, Ayaz, it is not a bad strike record because, I mean, how many other politicians do anything consequential? So, which if I were to take a step back, does being a sports person, for instance, uh, make you more disciplined for a political life as opposed to, let's say, a film star? Or is there no connection between the two? I mean, it could be. I mean, discipline could be yeah, intrinsic yeah. to yeah, a sports At least you get person. up in the morning and you, you have, have to you know? do things. Yeah. Look, I, I find the celebs, hmm. you know, uh, A, the, the guys will last hmm. are those who have uh, interest in hmm. the political hmm. process, so hmm. to speak. Hmm. Either innate or developed. Or developed. They yeah. have to develop it yeah. because otherwise you get cast yeah. away like hmm. it's happened with Govinda hmm. and Amitabh Bachchan for different reasons. Yeah. Uh, but there are people like Raj Babbar hmm. who, who actually yeah. uh, come from a, you know, a political thought. Yeah. And therefore, they see getting into active politics as a natural yeah. extension of their lives and their mm. careers. Mm. So, two actors in the South, as we mentioned. Mm. Uh, there are others who are actually part of the political process, but from the Rajya Sabha mm. uh, mm. route, sure, which sure. is Javed Akhtar and Shabana Azmi, mm. who also have political thought, yeah. but they're not so, contesting. Uh, which is raises an interesting question. So, are some of these uh, politicians, I mean, uh, some of these actors, and we'll come to cricketers in a moment, were they always wanting to be uh, connected with people's issues and so on and acting was perhaps a, a platform for them at that point of time? It could be. I yeah. think for instance, if you look at Shabana Azmi, she comes like from… Like people accuse journalists of that, right? Saying yeah. that, okay, a lot of journalists are heading towards this thing because they couldn't do anything in journalism. So. You know, but Shabana Azmi's moorings are so firmly in the progressive artist movement. And, yeah. You know, so yeah. she's inherited that from her father and stuff like that. So, I think getting into politics was obviously a very a natural, natural yeah. extension. But I feel that there is, I think, a, a distillation process hmm. time, hmm. five, six years. Hmm. If you cross that threshold, then hmm. perhaps you stay in politics. Okay. Otherwise, you fall out. Because right. if you just got in for the glamour and the immediate hmm. beneficies and loaves of power, hmm. then it may run its course, hmm. you know, as Shankar mentioned that very soon you realize that one letter you sign is not going to get things done and it's yeah. a it's a big you know coming down to earth kind of yeah. a shock yeah. for people who are otherwise used to uh, fawning people fawning over them right so uh, shankar what's your sense i mean the people who get into uh, i mean who become active politicians do they stay in it because they uh, have an innate desire existing or developed or uh, is it something that uh, you know, I mean, is forced upon them and therefore they, you know, do what they have to do to maintain their well, celebrity status, perhaps. Well, a little bit of both. I mean, uh, if you remember in the 50s and 60s, movies took on the role of motivating people and then you had uh, people like Balraj Sani who were associated with the left movement, A.K. Hangal, and you had movies like Bhutika Zameen and, you know, Naya Daur. Uh, and uh, even uh, Roti Kapra and Makan, all these movies were made with a particular political thought. Manoj Kumar's films on patriotism and nationalism uh, were all uh, organized in that area. So you have some of that thought embedded in the industry. It is a kind of soft power that uh, governments like to invest in. But 
when they come into politics whether they are able to develop that passing thought into uh, an integral part of their action forum and whether they are able to navigate all these tricky uh, situations i mean even the most seasoned politicians who who is a career politician often gets fed up with the kind of resistance that they face and they say okay nothing can be done i mean you know, it's god so country ram bharo se hai desh and all that stuff they say yeah. <laughs> but you you got to give the uh, uh, situation a little more time and people like raj babar whom i has mentioned uh, sunil dat they have all got seasoned in the system also because they they invested in a particular kind of uh thought a plural uh, polity in india uh, about uh, unity in india about secularism whatever the uh, shatrughan sinha always has invested uh, in the uh, right of center kind of politics and there are many others like it. and so as long as you are not an opportunist mm. uh, i think you tend to uh, have the people backing you but at some point people also want results so uh, no matter the intent of the celebrity the system also fails them got it so uh, yeah as before oh, we just interestingly yeah, yeah. if you look at people from theater yeah. they've been always very politically conscious Correct. Yes. across yeah and we talked about the progressive arts movement yeah. yeah yeah whether it's urdu hindi yeah. bengali tamil malayalam mm. whatever you mm. look at any language mm. the theater groups have been actually been activists mm. and political activists right. and if they come into cinema also mm. then they carry that Yeah. Thought with them, yeah. and you know. But the political parties are looking for people who are glamorous. Yes, ab- absolutely. I mean, I mean don't worry about that. Yeah. You see, you see, it's a, it's an attraction. Yeah. Uh, you know, the issue is about immediate attraction that yeah. you don't have to. For a voter, you don't have to think and wonder who this is. Correct. Yeah. If you see him, so even a puppy Larry can be uh, yes. resurrected to that extent. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you might wonder what's going to happen in the Gold Control Act. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's revisit the question that we started with, right? Why are political parties fielding celebrities in these elections? And as a corollary to that, is it the uh, is it, are we seeing the sort of best of it or the worst of it uh, in these elections? And and let me let me start with Shankar and then I'll come back to you. Uh, Shankar, so do you feel that uh, you know we've we've looked at the background, we've looked at what it's uh, uh, been so far, the history, the successes, the strike rate. but if we were to pose that question again today uh, is that uh, are political parties right in fielding so many can uh, celebrities as candidates and perhaps as uh, an addition to that is it fair to uh, the voters of this country that they are being uh, thrust upon i mean celebrities are being thrust upon them well i would say that they have every right to be uh, in politics if they celebrate and political parties have well within their rights to represent every shade of society in the uh, rainbow uh, that they present to the people to be our voters uh, ultimately it is the regime that comes to power that delivers and the systemic issues are there but by bringing in celebrities the parties are able to communicate better now imagine the communication skills of a shatrughan sinha or a paresh rawal or a smriti irani or the bhojpuri actor or npr who was marvelous and he he, he could communicate and reach out the political parties are well within their rights to do that i mean bringing in rajavardhan rathod uh, uh, olympic olympic medal winner uh, into the contest is a good idea because it takes away the complete sleaze ball image of politics that indians sort of have right uh, so and that is because uh, people see these guys get elected for 5 years and nothing changes so you know that is the tragic part of it okay so uh, i think by bringing in then uh, uh, new players celebrities and everything i think it's a good idea and needs to be promoted provided there is some kind of accountability of them uh, performing in their constituencies i think azharuddin has had a pretty bad uh, record in his constituency golda had a very bad record in his constituency and these things deter people because they think that this guy is now going to run off to the next clapper board and shoot the next one so uh, and people learn from this experiences right i think uh, a representation of the 
if the color and shade of the population in the electoral battle is a welcome and a good thing and Got particularly it. sports mm. persons coming in are really welcome Okay. So, Ayaz, let me come. Two questions have come in. Uh, one is from uh, Anusha, Radha and Sesha here. Uh, so, both are asking, I mean differently of course, Sesha says, will celebrities act as the light at the end of the tunnel for the people of our country? Uh, and Anusha asked, you can read the question there, is the credibility of these stars taken into account when they enter politics? Is it just for glamour? Exactly what we've been discussing, but they're asking the same question. Yeah, I think it's a combination of the two. I mean, mm. obviously the glamour factor is very, very strong, very important. Mm. But you can't take a, you know, somebody without any credibility at all and mm. hope that person would win. I mean, that would be a rare instance. Okay. So, I think, look, I share Shankar's view that, you know, in the spectrum of people who participate, why not mm. anybody and everybody? And mm. if there are people who have achieved something in their mm. profession, sports, cinema, mm. Mm. better. Right. I think the issue is how well you adjust and adapt. I think mm. these are watershed elections. There is a huge number of celebs who have come in mm. uh, <laughs> and there is a polarization even there. Yeah. Uh, in the old days, it seemed like just your face was good enough. Yeah. Now, it is also reaching a stage where the, the masses are saying, what is your conviction? Yeah. Are you there just for the mm. office mm. or are you believing in a parties, can, right. you know. Yeah, because I think this not. also su suggests to me that there must be politicians who have been offered and not taken the bait, so to speak, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, sorry, I, I, I'm uh, uh, cricketers or film stars who have been offered a political uh, seat and not taken the bait because they feel that they are not confident enough to do justice. Absolutely. I right. think you also need to kind of work out mm. how much can you, what, what all is in your plate and how much you can manage. Because mm. now politics mm. is also becoming a full-time kind of a thing in India. Right. It's not, and look at it historically, worldwide, yeah. there are not as many film stars and sports stars in politics as one would imagine. Right. Yeah. Because where in a, in a democracy where people get very discerning and mm. demanding, mm. then you'll find that it's not easy. The entry barriers become bigger and heavier. Right. And that perhaps this is the watershed so year. So Gary had to give up his chest completely yeah. to become a, a politician. political aspirant, a politician. Right. Right, I think that's a very, very uh, good point, uh, Ayaz. And uh, let's sort of conclude. Uh, Shankar, let me come back to you. Let's revisit the first question, right? We, we started by saying, uh, is, uh, do uh, uh, celebrities make good politicians? Are political parties being fair in uh, recruiting so many celebrities? That's including film stars and cricketers. And uh, will this be the watershed moment uh, in, that is 2014? Well, the counter question is, do politicians make good politicians? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, so uh, uh, I don't think we should sort of stick it into their profession as to whether they make good or bad perform, I mean, in terms of the success. Right. I think uh, in, in watershed years like uh, 1984, 1989, 2004 and this election particularly, hmm. a large number of celebrities and sports persons will be seen in the play because this is a hugely competitive do or die situation for political parties and they want to get every eye passing eyeball into their system so that they can vote. Uh, whether the, the polit, uh, sports persons and uh, actors contribute to uh, the larger debate? Yes, because when you, when any ordinary person on the street uh, is not so invested in the political process mm -hmm. and by bringing in celebrities and sports person, you sort of get them to sort of hook in even if for those yeah few minutes and they discuss whether these guys and so in a very strange way because people expect celebrities to be accountable I suppose the translation is that politicians will also be held accountable sometime soon in the future. Right. Thanks, uh, Shankar. Uh, Ayaz, there's one more question I'll quickly throw yeah. in from Anusha again. She says, is the credibility of these stars taken into account when they enter politics or is it glamour? I think that we've tried to answer. Uh, are our politicians so weak and inefficient that we need celebrities to uh, enter politics? Well, the second answer, <laughs> obviously, I think it seems. To the yeah. <laughs> but just to answer what uh, yeah, Shankar, Shankar said, is, that, yeah. you know, the politicians must be like politicians. Yeah. First Hopefully, of all, yeah. huh. I mean, you know, this is like, I mean, ultimately, the people get who they politicians deserve. what they deserve. Yeah. So We all get the politicians. We all we deserve, get the politicians yeah. that we deserve. Yeah. But the influx of so many celebs, so to speak, mm. Govind is also driven by what I think is a lot of 
television influence sure. on the on the Indian mm. psyche or the Indian mind. Yeah. You know, even if the guy is not speaking anything, just the face mm. is making a difference in the calculations of political parties. Mm. That's not a long-standing kind of a uh, you know benefit, mm. but it's an exigency. Okay. You immediately try and reap the rewards of that, and then say we'll sort it out later. Right, and basically, uh, sort of, if hope that the guy hope or the gal, guy, well, as it may be, uh, delivers, and uh, hopefully uh, the country will go somewhere. As, yep. as uh, you know, one of our uh, Twitter questions says, uh, "Will the poli will these uh, politicians or the celebrity politicians provide the light at the end of the tunnel?" And that's really what we are hoping for uh, for the 2014 Lok Sabha elections. We'll of course continue our uh, uh, Google Hangouts on this and more subjects with Ayaz uh, Shankar Iyer. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we, we are back tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. Thanks for watching. Thank you.